While playgrounds are still taped off in much of the country, they have begun to reopen in Western Canada. And while it's good that playtime has returned, we may have just missed a golden opportunity to fix one of the most glaring design flaws of modern times. This is a plastic tunnel slide. Send a child down it and it becomes a perfect machine to generate static electricity. This wouldn't necessarily be a problem if there was a way of neutralizing the charge at the bottom of the slide, but often the inside of the slide is covered in tiny metal bolts, each of which delivers an electric shock to the child as they descend. Studies have shown that a child can build up as much as 25,000 volts of static when going down one of these abominations. More if they live in a dry climate. Parents have literally been driven to spraying down their kids with static guard before they go to the playground. And this is causing literal medical harm to children. For children with cochlear implants, a quick trip down a plastic slide can short out their ability to hear and cause more than $1,000 in damage to the implants. So what did playground manufacturers do when they discovered that their slides were turning children into human lightning bolts? Meh! Slides were shocking me as a kid, now they're shocking my child, and presumably they'll still be shocking my descendants in some distant future where the Pope is a ferret or something. Which is a shame, because this is an easily solved engineering problem. Just put the bolts on the outside of the slide. We're already doing it with water slides. The bolts are placed at the outside to prevent corrosion. Some playground manufacturers have indeed figured this out, but still hundreds if not thousands of slides are still being sold every year with the same bolt-in tunnel design flaw. The problem here is one of economics. The people buying the slides aren't the ones being shocked by them. If a car shocked you every time you put the key in the ignition, people would quickly stop buying that car. But children have no say in what kinds of slides get purchased for their playground, so there's often no consequence for companies chronically turning out a crappy product. Take the example of a McDonald's play place, a common site for shock slides. McDonald's just wants a play place. They're not tremendously interested in the details. Neither are McDonald's' clients. They're just stressed parents looking for a few minutes of quiet time in exchange for a Big Mac meal. The only victims of a crappy play place slide are the children. The one person in this equation with no power to decide purchasing decisions. Thus, the bad design persists and generations of kids continue to be shocked for no reason. There was one slightly positive side to this, however. At least our children are learning the important free market lesson that when someone else is in charge of deciding what products you're allowed to use, those products are probably going to suck. Just ask your average car buyer in East Germany.